The new van. Well, do you know, like any new vehicle, it's really worth taking a little bit of time to familiarise yourself with some of the additions. But let me tell you some straight away. This is a beauty. I like this one. Let me just lock that. Folding mirrors. So it saves us having to move them in every time we park in busy areas. There's cameras. We have a camera right at the front here. We have a camera at the rear. They're very helpful. And these as well, look. Additional locks on the two sides and the rear door. And it's very easy activated. Just put it in. That's it locked. But let's go and have a look at some of the daily checks that we should be carrying out. Vehicle checks. Well... We've got daily ones and we've got weekly ones. The daily ones, do you know, for me, I always like to get like a little rhythm going. And in my mind, I have the word tells because the vehicle tells you when something's wrong. So the T is for tires. We check the tires. E is the electrics. The first L is the liquids. The second L is the load, make sure it's secure. And the S is the general state of the vehicle. It's a kind of a walk around. I want to start with a T for tyres. So on a daily basis, you're more or less just checking the wall of the tyre and make sure there's no bulges or cuts in it. But it starts before that, because you're approaching the vehicle, you just look to see if there's about enough wind in them. You can tell if it's a little bit flat, and there's a great indicator here <laughs> of what the PSI should be. So that's on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis, it's a bit more comprehensive. We need to check the tread. But look, get the power steering and get it, because then you can get both these tyres checked. And across three quarters of that, you know, industry standard is 1.6 mil, but British gas is two millimetres. How do you check that? Well, there's a gauge. There's a better gauge, 20 pence piece. You know the little edge on a 20 pence piece? That's 1.6. So if we're checking that in there, we're looking for two mil. But also check the inside of it here as well. Get some safety gloves on and check it. Have a good check around the outside. Now then, if you need your tyres changing, because these are cracking tyres, these are cross climate ones, good for the winter as well. But if you need them changing, call this number on the screen here. But when you do it, always take the mobile option. You know, get them to come to you. You're busy enough, no need to go to them. Get them to come to you. So that's kind of the tyres. And also, keep checking this. My E is for the electrics. So, what I do is I just turn the ignition on, but I don't start the engine, because I haven't done my oil check yet, and that would give me a false reading. So this, get me hazards on. So what I can do there is I'm just gonna have a nice little walk around, make sure all the lights are working, all of the hazards are working. Simple walk around. And then for the brakes, there's always something there which can reflect. When you pump the brakes, I can see it there in the trees. If you've got someone with you, it's real easy. But go around and check all of the lights. So the first L is liquids. So on the daily checks, I like to have a little squint underneath there because in all surfaces and weather conditions, you can always see if there's been some kind of leak. But on our weekly ones, we need to physically check the fluids. So that means popping the bonnet. The catch for that is just down here. You've got to have the door right open and there's the catch right there. So you've got the blue rag for the oil check. Oh, here's a cracking little tip. When you pop the bonnet there, if you just stand back ever so slightly, you'll see a tiny little cut out there. And that's where you go in for the bonnet release. Now, screen wash, it's here. Very easy to fill from here. Go through a lot of that this time of year. You're getting all that spray off the vehicles in front. The engine oil there, there's the oil can in yellow on the black cap, shows you exactly. And just straight down from that, is the dipstick, so let's check the oil. But please remember, it's always when the vehicle is on level ground. So, we take the dipstick out, and there's the two levels there between the two, or almost like teardrops, so we'll clean it, get that nice and clean, get it back in, roll away in, and then bring it back and check. And that is absolutely spot on. Difficult to see with this, it's a brand new vehicle. 
as the engine gets used, it'll discolour a little bit more. But do you know, just when we're talking about this engine, you're going to be looking at this every single week. You're going to see it when it's brand new. Just look at it and check things. So when you're looking on a weekly basis, you're looking for anything which is obviously wrong. And then we call it in. But these aren't the only fluids in this vehicle. There's two more I want to talk about. So here they are here. First one, diesel. A lovely little holder there for the cap as well, Steve, it's scratching this. What I like to do as well, you know when you journey home, I always check my fuel, and if it's getting a quarter tank, fill it up before I get home, cracking for the next day. Failure to prepare, I think the word is, isn't it? <laughs> but this one next to it, this could be a new concept for a few of you. Add blue. It's this stuff here, see? Add blue. But an important point, never the two to mix. Two separate tanks. You mix them, the car's done, finished. But another important point with this is the engine won't run without this. It's a bit like running out of fuel. Now you've got a great warning light on the dash which will give you a countdown of your miles of how long's left before you fill it up. But a couple of pointers on filling it up as well. Now there is no little holder for this but I'll just put it there. Because if I come to shut this it falls off and it's a reminder I haven't put it on right. But this is the key. With the ad blue comes its bespoke funnel. No DIY funnels for doing this, all right? Because there's two apertures in this. And you know when you're pouring fluid out of anything, if the air's going in, the fluid comes out really well. But if the air's blocked, it won't actually come out. So this allows the air to flow until it's full and then it blocks the air so you actually can't overfill it. So the ad blue goes in there and not all over you because it's not nice stuff when it's on you. So always this, attach it to the, the canister, get it in there, put it right the way in, chuck it up, and if you've got that correct, when it's full, it'll stop. So, that's the two other fluids. Oh, when you're doing this though, I haven't actually done it, make sure you get some disposable gloves. You don't want this stuff on your hands. Correct PPE, but you know that anyway, don't you? Obviously, we're always looking to get the best source for the fluids. So here's our current status. This is where we can get them from. Our second L is load. Now, as a driver, you know by now you're responsible for the load in the vehicle. If you haven't seen the racking and where everything goes yet by now, the video, make sure you see it. If you have, you know it's there. But here's the thing, we have a clear cab policy. So make sure the load is secure and there's nothing in here. So what we do is we don't put loads in here and we don't put passengers in the back, all right? <laughs> clear cab policy. The final S is the general state of the vehicle. And do you know, the brand's on there. We're proud of this. We're professional people. So if there's a mirror hanging off, it's the same number, we get it fixed. Just pick the right option. But it's more than that. It's just the general state of it. Is it clean? You know you can get car, car washes on your fuel card? It might be a case of just wiping the number plate with a bit of the blue cloth. Can you see the number plate? Just wipe the lights to make sure everybody can see them. It's, it's an ambassador for what we do, isn't it? Make sure it's in good condition, eh? So let's talk about the cab, our driving position. Well, British Gas have sourced the best possible seat available with this vehicle. And it comes with some different adjustments. Let's have a look at the seat itself. There's four of them. This one here, this is a, a, a quite a common feature in most vehicles now. It takes the seat down and up. The one just behind this, I use my thumb, push it away, and that lets you get the back of the seat forward or back to the right position. You've obviously got the bar underneath, which makes you slide forward and back. And at the other side of the chair, you have the little round that is there, and that turning that intensifies the lumber for you. But what we need to do is take full advantage of all of these adjustments that are available to us, so we're always driving from the optimum position because there's an additional one here, which I love, is the steering wheel. 
just this bit here, you just pull that down, and it not only goes up and down, but it actually goes forward and back as well. So you can get that in the perfect position so you can see the dials, you're here. Remember to lock it back into position as well. <laughs> it's not good driving along and you're giving it to one of them, is it? <laughs> and then you obviously know, make sure the mirrors are spot on so we're driving exactly as we are. But the key thing here for me is, when we say optimum position, it's your knee and your hip. If you think the knee should be at least level or higher than your hip, but this here ain't your hip. <laughs> That's called a thigh. <laughs> it's the hip joint here. So knee joint to hip joint, slightly higher or level, is about the best position to be. Well, now we're in the optimum position. Let's just talk about some of these fabulous features that come with this new vehicle. Well, the first one here, you can see that we have a split seat. And this comes up. And this is our torch area. Torch fits in there, but you've got the charger already fixed. So that's fabulous there. There's a little bit of room for some more bits and pieces if you need them. That one comes up as well, but no leaning over and doing from here. Go around there and open it with the correct manual handling. You can use that for your paperwork. You've also got storage up here for that sort of stuff. This here, fabulous laptop and charger. So just working your way around is really good. Handbrake. <laughs> it's not one, it's here, it's electronic, a tiny little button, little red one says P. But you know, it, it's great because you take that off, that's on, take that off there, and it goes to release it, there, the park brake, you've got to put your foot on the foot brake. Park brake released. Get that back on again. So that's it, that's your hand brake there. Um, other things. One thing I really want to talk to you about here is what's called the lane assist. Um, because this drives you nuts if you're not used to it or can. If you're actually moving across to change lanes, it, the red light can come on there and it throws you back into your lane. And you think, what's going on, what's going on? You know the way around that is indicate. <laughs> Drive correctly, indicate and it won't come on. I think it's a fail safe in case you're falling asleep and you're drifting and that's what comes on, I'm sure that's what it's for. Now, there is a button here you can switch that off because if you're going through roadworks or country lanes, it, it could drive you a little bit mad. Um, but make sure you switch it back on again because it is a very good safety feature. Another one is you'll have warnings if you're getting too close to vehicles in front. And the final one for me is check on your wing mirrors because there's a light in the top corner which warns you about blind spots. I've, I've experienced this a few times when you've looked in the mirror and you don't think there's anything there, but that's flashing and that means there's another vehicle or something is in your blind spot. It could be a cyclist, a, a motorbike, anything. When that's flashing, just know something's in your blind spot and that could be it either side. We also have the media screen here. Um, you have a USB point there so you can actually plug the phone in so you get a mirror of what's on your phone. But remember, all of this stuff needs to be set up before you set off. Company policy is no use of the phone while you're driving. Do it while you're stationary, get it going that way. We have cameras, we have cameras in the car, but don't worry, it's not checking your driving. <laughs> it's features and safety features of it. It can, it can predict potential collisions. It can look at speeds and, and gives you the speeds of the roads and things like that. It can be auto for your lights. So if you've got your light on full beam, it will auto dip. We've got auto lights. We've got automatic windscreen wipers. But, oh, can I just go back to that speed for a second? Please remember this is a commercial vehicle. So it's 50 on B roads, 60 dual carriageway, but you can do 70 on the motorway. And the name's on the vehicle as well, remember that. And we have, these are the cameras, the reversing cameras. Let me just put that in reverse for a second. See, there we have it there, so it's shown reverse. That's the side camera, and that's the rear camera. On some of the first models, it might be on the media system. But that, that's great, and it shows you exactly the direction you're going to be going in. Fabulous features in this. What you should be doing, guys, is just checking it out. Have a bit play with it, because the more you get used to it, the nicer it is to drive and you can take full advantage of everything that is here. It's a cracking vehicle.
And a cracking little habit is always looking down as you're getting out because see what you're stepping onto saves you from twisting the ankle. <laughs> and it goes without saying, whenever we're leaving the vehicle, we've got to park it safely. Handbrake, in gear, and the wheels turn towards the curb. And then we make sure it's locked. But when it's locked, make sure all the locks are locked. Be safe.